All right. So um, next thing I want to go over, go ahead and load, load up the plugin here, give us a little bit more room, is um, corrective blend shapes. And this is, this is where the plugin really, really shines. So here are two arms. Right here, it should probably look familiar to a lot of you, this, this horrible indentation there. Look around it, like nothing about that looks real or good. Uh, but if you've just got basic skinning, you're probably gonna get some of that. Like, you know, I probably could have gotten a little bit better than this if I'd spent more time on skinning that, but it's, it's never gonna be perfect with just skinning. Over here, we've got something that looks a lot more natural. It's keeping the shape of the elbow. It's keeping a lot more volume. And so I'm going to show you how to set that up. And that can be a thing that really takes a rig from looking pretty amateur to something a little bit more polished and high end. So um, I've got that on a layer, so I'll just hide that and we'll just work on this. So as before, I'm selecting the mesh, coming over here and clicking select to uh, tell shapes that this is what I'm gonna be working on. Uh, there are no blend shapes coming into it right now, but I'm just gonna jump right in. So um, the, other thi the, the other thing about working on correctives, if you've done this without this plugin, the, the setup involves placing separate cameras and putting one thing in pose and another thing just in the standard T pose and trying to move the points on the T pose one so that it, it, it's, it's awful. It's just a nightmare. This plugin lets you work on the, um, on the character in the pose that you're trying to correct. So I've got this just keyed to, to that value, which is a, a pretty good, um, you know, most animation is gonna stay within that range. So let's go with that. And I'm just gonna hit enter sculpt mode to jump right into it. Um, it does work a little bit better while you're sculpting to stay uh, not in the smooth preview mode and then just check your work by turning it off and back on. Um, it's, at least on some of the computers here, working in this mode is going to let you work a lot faster, you're gonna have fewer crashes, um, those kinds of things. So uh, with that said, I'm just gonna come in here. My brush is enormous. Um, and I'll start pulling this out and I'm going to do my very best to not spend a lot of time on this because this is not, not thrilling television right here. Uh, you can get inside here. Uh, one little little uh, tip if you do need to work uh, and like be inside an arm to, to do some modeling, uh, you can click here to select your camera and change your focal length to something like 16. That'll, that'll make it a lot easier to get your camera where you want it to be and to see what you're doing. Um, so, and with that said, let me switch back to my tool here. Using that shift and drag to smooth, pulling out, up, down, all of that. So, again, not super awesome yet, but it's, it's getting there. Uh, and you can do, do things like if you want, want to make sure that the, um, the way the edges are moving because of how your texture is going to be applied, you can use that slide function to, you know, kind of move some of these towards the, the joint if you want, whatever you want to do. Like, it's all up to you. Um, and then one other thing I will show you also is this depth function, which works sometimes and doesn't work other times, but this can be really handy. Um, so let's say I've got, um, you know, overlapping geometry there. I could add one to this, and in theory, yeah, it is working right now. So with depth one, it'll skip the first surface it hits and apply its deformation one layer past that. If you want to go two layers past that, oh, see, now it's not working. So it's, it's a little bit finicky, but in theory, you can work on something that is uh, behind the geometry that you're seeing by, by playing with that depth value. Um, yeah, so let's just go with that for right now. So I'll click exit sculpt mode to commit it. Um, and now I see that this is uh, working if, if I turn it on manually, but what we really want is for that to, oh, 
Isn't that beautiful? So this is the kind of shape you would have to create over here. And you would have to know that, like, oh, of course, Maya, this, this horrible abscess is what you want to see over here to get what I want when it, the arm's bent, right? So it's so much nicer to be able to sculpt in pose. Uh, but what we want is to not have to you know, key this or anything crazy like that. We want it to just work automatically whenever we bend the elbow. So I'll come back in here, and I will come down to the shape driver settings. And this list will automatically populate with all of the joints that the mesh is bound to. So if you're working on something that is skinned, you'll see all of the joints in there. Um, if, you, if you want something to control this deformation other than the joints, that's fine too. So let's say I, I want to have this controller do it instead of the joint. Um, I could just select the controller, come in here, add from scene, and now I've got that as an option to, um, to drive that, that blend shape. Um, I am going to go ahead and just use the, the elbow joint. Um, so all I need to do then is select that with, uh, well, I'll select the blend shape, select the, the driver, in this case the elbow joint, and then up here click set driven key. I'll go over all this again because uh, it's a lot of very particular steps in a row. Uh, and this is one of the amazing things about this. It will give its best guess for what attribute you want to, um, it thinks you want to use to control this. So. Um, because on the elbow joint, nothing has really changed except for rotate Y. So it's like, oh, I can, I'm guessing then that you want this blend shape to go from a value of 0 to 1 as the elbow rotation goes from 0 to negative 100. And in this case, that is right. So um, we're ready to connect. Um, the one other tip I've got here is you do have uh, different kinds of um, interpolation. So whether it's just going to be a 0, 0 is 1, or, or 1 is 1, or if you're going to have sort of an ease, ease in, ease out effect at either end. Um, I have found that for correctives, going with fast works best. So that means you're going to get uh, most, of the, um, most of the blend shape at the end of the movement. Um, and that's, that's what, what will work best here for the elbow. So. Um, and because I clicked away, OK, no, it's still good. So uh, just checking that everything's good. We've got this selected, this selected, set driven key. We're happy here with both our start and end values, the attribute, and our interpolation. And then I just come up to the corrective and click in this column. You'll see the tooltip shows up here. It says Create Shape Driver. I click it, click OK, and now it works. Um, so. As I go from there to there, it's turning on. We are getting a little bit of weirdness there, right? Like that, that doesn't look quite right. We're still getting some of that weird bulge. And uh, this has great tools for that too. So I'll come in here. And with this, this blend shape collected, selected, uh, let me go ahead and name that elbow corrective. With that uh, in the position where I want it to correct, and usually you're going to want to find the point where it looks the worst in its in its travel, and and that's where you'll you'll want to uh, create your fix. And this is kind of weird. I come down to the name next to the slider, right click, and click Add In Between. It adds this here, but there it doesn't do anything yet. So I'll put it back to that that <coughs> matched value. And then I enter sculpt mode again. So now I'm creating a, another target shape that I'm, I'm going to want this elbow to hit along the way from 0 to 1 on the, uh, on the other blend shape. Remember, you've got that smooth functionality. All good stuff. So just call it with that. I'm going to say I like that and exit. That commits it. Now, as I go from 0 to 1, you know, and you can go back in and, and change these, whatever else, uh, but we're just going to go with that for right now. Um, all the auto saves again. Um, 
if you do find that you need to change one of your blend shapes, you don't quite like how, how it's, it's looking, just get it to the value you want, uh, you want to change. Right now it's at 0.527, this is 0.527. I can click tweak and come back into this. Smooth it out a little bit more, exit sculpt mode, and that has updated. And you know, let's say I wanted to fix that, I could add another in between the exact same way uh, in between those two values, uh, you can do that as much as you as much as you need. Um, so that's that's kind of the process for setting up correctives, tweaking those shapes once you've made them, um, and connecting them to a um, a controller, whether that's a joint or you know if I wanted to use the rotation on this, I could do that too, um, the same same exact way. So. I know that was a lot all at once. Is there anything anybody would like me to go over again or to clarify in that process? Yeah, how do you like reintroduce the um, plugin to an Maya? Um, reintroduce it? Like how do you install it to Maya? The, that process of opening that Maya file that you downloaded and uh, going through that, that interface that pops up, just using that custom install and clicking install. That does it, and that'll install it to your student home drive here. So every t you don't have to reinstall it every time you sit down. You just have to do it once, and it'll work on every computer in the building. Yeah. And that's, that's per version, per operating system. So if you want to be working in 2015 and 2016, you'll need to install it in both. And if you also are going to be spending some time in Linux, you'll need to install it separately on there. Uh, this is more of a general question. Has anyone else seen something that installs by running a script through Maya to do that? Because that's pretty cool. Yeah. It is cool. I, I have not encountered anything else like that. But it's neat. It's pretty easy to get it installed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I assume he's got script nodes going that, um, yeah, exactly. that, that are just calling everything else. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a really neat way to do it. Yeah, I also noticed that there so is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, Brian mentioned that you'd done some work on that, so that's that's really great. Brent? I also noticed that there's a, um, a box uh, under animation with the subcontrols. I'm going to be covering that. Okay. And that's, that's where you get into those one-off sorts of tweaks, so I'll, I'll, I've got a separate file to, to cover that. Right. I had a thought, um, so you were talking about some ugly and you had mentioned setting the um, circulation. Um, and I'm sure you might have thought of this, but if anybody hasn't, you can, since this is a CGRT, you can change that circulation to the graph editor. Yes. And you can also add in between the graph editor. Uh, just for that specific function, you can add keys on that graph. Mm -hmm. um, could you go back to the in between screen? I, I was not really clear with that. Yeah, you know what? I'll just uh, I'll show you how to delete a blend shape, and then I will recreate that. So, um, next to all of these, you've got a trash can, and that's how you that's how you get rid of one. So, um, I'll get rid of that in between. Wasn't great anyway, um, and and then I will recreate it. So, again, where you see the word the word base here for the uh, for the blend shape, right click, come down here. Add in between. Once you've done that, before you click anything else up here, change any of these values, just come down here and click Enter Sculpt Mode. Do your sculpting, whatever. That. Great stuff, guys. All right. Exit, and it's committed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Excellent. Um, and the same thing, if you want to get rid of your base channel, you want to just scrap the whole thing, that's fine. Uh, if, you do, if you do delete the base, that'll delete the in-between along with it, but you can do that. Um, and if you do need to break the connection to the driver, um, you would just come up here to the, that same button you click to create the connection, and you'll see when you hover over it, it does say delete shape, uh, shape driver. You can click that. It'll ask you to confirm if you actually want to do that. But that's that's how you would how would go up, go about breaking the connection from the driver to the blend shape. So I'll just cancel because happy enough with that. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for the the corrective example. I'm going to move on to creating. Uh, yeah, sorry. There's a mirror feature. 
Yeah, um, I'm going to show combo stuff next. And because there's, there is a mirror feature, um, and it's, you kind of get at it the same way. You come in here and do create opposite. Um, but there's nothing over there. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll show that in the, in the next example.